Data storage has come a long way from the early days of punch cards and magnetic tape. The need to store and retrieve large amounts of data has driven the development of new technologies, each one building on the advancements of its predecessors. Welcome to this episode of Bite Size. In this video, we will explore the history of data storage devices and trace their evolution from the earliest days of computing to the present day. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Let's get started. The earliest data storage attempt was the punch card, also known as the Hollerith card, named after the American inventor Herman Hollerith in the late 19th century. Punch cards consisted of a rectangular piece of card or stiff paper with holes punched into specific positions to represent information. The cards were used with mechanical card reading machines to input, store, and retrieve data. These punch cards were widely used in early computing systems, such as the IBM mainframe computers of the 1950s and 60s, and other government organizations. The data on a punch card was represented by the presence or absence of holes in specific positions. For example, a hole in a specific column could represent a 1 in binary, and the absence of a hole could represent a 0. This representation of the binary system on the punch card itself was used to encode different types of information. This could have been things like numbers or letters, in addition to other characters that together form some basic data or instructions such as simple programs. The introduction of punch cards were an important step in the development of modern computing and were used until the widespread adoption of magnetic storage devices such as magnetic tape and hard drives. Tape drives used a continuous strip of magnetic tape to store and retrieve data. The tape was typically made of a thin strip of plastic, usually coated with a layer of iron oxide. To write data, a tiny electromagnet built into the tape drive generates a magnetic field that magnetizes the magnetic particles on the tape in either a north or south direction. This creates patterns of magnetic polarity that represents a series of data. When the tape is played back, the read head detects the magnetic fields and converts them back into an electrical signal, which can be understood and interpreted by a computer. Magnetic tape drives were especially popular in mainframe and early personal computers. They offered several advantages over other forms of data storage at the time, like the previously mentioned punch cards. These included higher reliability and capacity. However, just like punch cards, they had a tendency to degrade over time. Moving on to the next evolution. The first disk storage devices were huge and very expensive in comparison to today's standards. As technology improved and costs decreased, disk-based storage became increasingly popular, eventually replacing magnetic tape as the dominant form of storage. The first magnetic hard drive, also known as the IBM 350 RAMAC, was introduced by IBM in 1956, RAMAC standing for Random Access Method of Accounting and Control. It was one of the first commercial magnetic disk storage systems and was a revolutionary technology that allowed for high-speed storage and retrieval. The IBM 350 used a stack of around 50 individual disks, each 24 inches in diameter. This stack was collectively known as a disk pack. It had a storage capacity of 5 megabytes and was about the size of two refrigerators. IBM touted the system as being able to store the equivalent of 64,000 punch cards. This cost around $10,000 per megabyte of storage, making it very expensive at the time, around $100,000 in today's money. Nevertheless, it played a crucial role in the development of magnetic disk storage and helped to establish IBM as a leader in the field. One of the most notable features of the 350 was its use of a read and write head attached to a moving mechanical arm. The arm had the ability to position the head over an appropriate disk in the stack, allowing for efficient and direct access to any data on the disk pack. As you can probably guess, this was a significant improvement over previously mentioned technologies. Next up on our list of evolving storage devices is the floppy disk. The introduction of floppy disks in the 1970s marked a major turning point in the history of data storage. Floppy disks were small, portable, and could be used with newly released personal computers at the time. They consisted of a thin, flexible plastic disk encased in a protective jacket that was coated with magnetic material. Similarly to magnetic tape, to write data the disk was inserted into a floppy drive that used a magnetic field to encode the data. To read data, a read head would detect the magnetic patterns on the disk and convert them back into electrical binary data that could be interpreted by a computer. Floppy disks were soon followed by hard disk drives, which offered much greater storage capacity with further improved performance. When introduced, these hard disk drives were quickly adopted as the standard form of storage for personal computers. 
Continuing the journey of evolution, the early 1990s saw the introduction of CD-ROMs, standing for compact disk-read-only memory. This evolution provided a new way of storing and distributing data. CD-ROMs were cheap, portable, and could store larger amounts, making them ideal for widely distributing digital content, as well as software. 1995 saw the launch of the well-known digital versatile disc, or DVD. This offered even greater storage capacity, with again even further performance gains. CDs and DVDs are both optical storage devices that use a laser to read data stored on the disc. These discs have a reflective surface with tiny microscopic grooves that represent digital information. To read the data, a laser beam is directed onto the reflective surface of the disc. Changes in reflection caused by the grooves are detected by a sensor that converts these changes into digital information. The primary difference between CDs and DVDs is that DVDs can store much more due to their higher storage capacity, which allows them to store high-quality video. Now moving away from tapes and discs, the introduction of flash memory in the late 1990s marked another major turning point in the history of data storage. Flash storage, also known as flash memory, is a type of non-volatile, solid-state storage technology that uses floating gate transistors to store data. It was first introduced in the 1980s and has since become a widely used form of storage for a variety of applications including mobile devices, digital cameras, and more. Over the years, flash storage has gone through several stages of development. Let's briefly look at these. Single Level Cell or SLC Flash this early form of flash storage stored one bit of data per cell. A cell is the basic unit of flash memory that stores data consisting of a group of transistors arranged in a specific way to hold a binary value. This means that each cell can either be in one of two states, either a 1 or a 0. SLC flash offered high performance and reliability but was expensive and had limited storage capacity. Next up, let's look at multi-level cell or MLC flash. This is a more cost-effective form of flash that has the ability to store two bits of data per cell, increasing storage density, thus reducing cost. MLC flash has lower performance and reliability compared to SLC, but is more suitable for consumer applications. Another type is TLC or triple-level cell flash. This further evolution of flash stored three bits of data per cell, improving on storage density and reducing costs even further. Currently, data storage devices continue to evolve with the advent of new technologies such as the cloud, as well as the Internet of Things. Cloud storage, which I'm sure most have heard of, allows users to store and manage their data over the Internet rather than on local storage devices. The concept of cloud storage has been around since the early days of the Internet, but it has evolved significantly over the years with several key developments. The first being decentralization. In the early days of cloud storage, data was stored on centralized servers owned and operated by large companies or service providers. This allowed users to access their data from any device with an internet connection, but also created concerns about data security and privacy. Now, reputable cloud infrastructures are vastly distributed, meaning it's almost impossible to not have access to your data. A further development in the cloud was object storage. The development of object storage systems allowed cloud providers to offer more scalable, cost-effective, and flexible alternatives as opposed to traditional block and file storage systems. Object storage systems store data as objects rather than as files or blocks, making it easier to store and manage large amounts of unstructured data. Public, private, and hybrid clouds the development of these cloud models allowed individuals and businesses to choose the type of cloud storage that best met their specific needs. This gave greater flexibility to store sensitive data on private clouds while taking advantage of the cost savings and scalability of public clouds for other data. Lastly, AI-powered management. Advancements in artificial intelligence and machine learning have enabled cloud storage providers to offer more sophisticated and automated management features such as data tiering, backup and recovery, and data archiving. Overall, the development of cloud storage has revolutionized the way we store and manage data. With seemingly endless amounts of storage and continued advancements in this technology, it is almost certain that the cloud will continue to play a dominant role in the future. To conclude, the history of data storage devices is a story of rapid advancement with continued innovation, driven by the need to store and retrieve increasingly more data.
From magnetic tapes to hard drives to cloud storage, as technology continues to evolve, so will our ability to store more compact data with greater efficiency. Thanks for watching. We hope you learned something new today. To help support our channel, consider subscribing for more content like this. See you in the next video.